It all sort of just happened in a flash in, in January of 92, and I went for it from there. As a five-year-old, Courier started out throwing caution to the winds by hitting the ball just about as hard as he could, and that's still the way it is with him. Power aplenty. Okay, good. Let's go. Fire in the hole. This man has just been too tough. Three, two, you're on. He is playing some ball. I had a really good year in 1991, and I, I got into the top 10, won my first major. I wasn't that close to number one when I finished the season, but then I won the Australian Open, and that really propelled me right into the mix, and I knew that I could get there if I had a good week in San Francisco, which was my first tournament after winning the Australian Open. We're waiting for this. The hotter it gets, the hotter Jim Courier gets. But he's in pretty good form, and we can look forward to another exciting year of tennis from this man. So it all kind of happened in a hurry. It wasn't like a long chase where I had months and months to think about it and I was close. It all sort of just happened in a flash in, in January of, of 92, and I went for it from there. And there it is. He's done it. Courier into the finals. He's the number one player in the world. Do you recall that, that moment is an iconic celebration in San Francisco? I do. No, I definitely do. I, and I remember feeling incredible amounts of stress in each match to try and get there because you, you look at the rankings and you realize, well, this is a real shot. If I get to the finals, I'm going to get to number one. But there's also a chance that I never get there because it wasn't clear what, what Stefan and what Boris were going to do. You know, Boris had the upper hand in those uh, six earlier matches, although I, I played some close tennis against him. but. You know, he's, he's very tough upstairs as well as here on the court. So, uh, you know, uh, it's a mental match against Boris as, as much as a physical. So I'm, I'm real happy to, to pull one out. They could have run away from me and I could have never touched it. So uh, I was feeling a lot of pressure to get there. And, and then, you know, a lot of relief and excitement when I finally did. And the man on top of the mountain is Jim Courier. Just like to congratulate Jim on once again having a great tournament. Uh, we, as tennis players, know why he's ranked number one in the world, and he deserves to be there. Well done, Jim. Jim Courier, who has always congratulated the people that have helped him get to where he is, and where he is is number one, and after today, he will stay there. There's no doubt that a number one player carries a huge target. That's a big scalp for any player in the locker room to try and, and get a win against. Uh, it's, it's a badge of honor, also, and it's something that gives a lot of confidence when you carry it. And the points, of course, are all part of the ATP computer. Novak is carried unbelievably more weeks at number one than anyone else. He, he likes being on top of the mountain, and I don't see him giving that one up easily. And Novak Djokovic will be the year-end number one and yet more history for the Super Serve. Medvedev has proven himself to be right there as far as the best hardcore players in the world. He and Novak clearly separated themselves last year, and that was a lot of work for him to get up there, and he's done a great job. His next step in his evolution now is to maintain on the hard courts and then add a little bit more on the grass, which I think he can especially prosper in, and then also just, you know, the clay, it's gonna be more challenging, but you need that all-around game and the all-around uh, opportunities to gain points on all surfaces, I think, to, to really be a, a number one with longevity. Daniel Medvedev is the master in Toronto. I think Sasha's second half of the season was incredible. Once he got lift off in, in the Olympics and didn't let go from there, he just kept on uh, putting big tournaments in his pocket. It was really impressive. He's got all court game. He's got all surface game. He's got the, the mindset, I think, to just stay tough and just to roll with the punches. And he's gonna be a real factor in the, in the number one conversation in the years to come. Alexander Zverev is the champion in Turin. They're the closest right now, clearly they're the closest. I think Rafa, if he's healthy, will certainly get himself back in contention for it. Oh, yes! A moment of magic from Nadal. 
Well, I think wanting it too much definitely is a distraction. I think it distracts a player from what they need to focus on, which is what's in their control, and that's the next shot they're gonna hit. If you start thinking about all these externals and the possibilities, the what ifs, uh, it clouds your judgment and it takes energy away from where your focus needs to be, but it's, it's almost impossible not to. Lord, he made it. What a pressure point that was for Jim Courier. I was lucky because I got there when I was young, and I still had areas in my game that needed development, and I knew that. We had a plan with my coaches that we were gonna continue to work no matter what. So for me, it, it, getting to number one didn't stop the overall big picture plan. It wasn't this long chase that, that it had taken 10 years for me to finally track down somebody. It all happened in a hurry, and it, it was you know, fairly early in my career. So there, there are different positions when people attain the ranking, and therefore they'll have different perspectives. Mine was of a young player who still had a lot to achieve. Bye.